Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is my Bianchi Brava part spin build. Just got finished with it yesterday and it turned out really nice. It's a fun bike to ride. If you have any questions or comments, uh, well, you know what to do. And I hope you enjoy the video. The last one didn't break, so we're really hoping this one doesn't break either. Put my thumb over it so it doesn't go flying, but basically kind of work it around. I don't know what the material is, but it has some flexibility to it. There we go. That's the retaining ring. Um, I'm keeping my hand under here in case some of them fall through, which they probably will. There you go. All right, here's the ball bearings, the race and the retaining ring in their most clean state. So there we go. And I'm simply gonna flip it and lay it like that. Okay, I can see some of them actually didn't go in the right place, yikes. <laughs> Didn't have that happen on the other side. So I see some of the bearings kind of popping out of place. I'm just pushing them with my finger back where they go. Okay. Yeah, I think everything's good now. Maybe it's because I put so much grease in. That actually might have been too much grease, so the bearings sat super high. It's okay. There is no grit. Totally quiet, exactly what we want. So now both sides are done, totally quiet. Let's put the fork in. I'm sticking the fork down through the bottom of the head tube. It'll come out the top here in a second. Yeah. Now I'm just holding it with my one hand. I'm going to stick this, or rather thread this top race like that. Hopefully it'll thread all the way down nice and easily. Obviously once I get the handlebars on and everything, uh, we can do some more adjustments, but I think that feels pretty good for now. So I'm going to uh, hold that one steady where it's at and take this lock, lock nut on the top and lock it down without letting anything else move. Okay, here we go for the lockdown. That's better. It's still getting all snug towards the bottom. Not totally sure why that is. It's, plenty, it's going in plenty deep. That's actually good right there. Okay, here's the crank set, and um, I'm going to probably be removing this big one and just not using it. I just don't need a three by, and I definitely don't need a 50 or 52 or whatever it is. I did already loosen it up. One thing I might do different if I could do it again is uh, maybe somehow tape up these threads or something before putting the linseed oil inside the tubes because it all ended up pooling down here and like overnight dripped more and more and it's like it was really hard to get out of the threads. In fact, I'm not even sure if I have actually got it all out yet or not. Luckily, bottom brackets usually do say which side goes on which. So that says R, so this is going to be the right hand side. Well, you know. Yeah. Now for the wheels, um, you may have seen these kick around my channel before. These are some Mavic rims uh, with Tiagra hubs. They're nice and straight and I've had them for a long time.
and fits good with this tire size too. It's a 28 millimeter tire. Looks pretty centered, a little bit, a little bit to the left down here, but. And uh, yeah, these tires are, they actually came off my Co-op ARD 1.1. They're 28 mils wide. This is a used chain. I don't know where it came from or where I got it, but I'm going to treat it to a new quick link. I decided to go with gold, not because I love gold parts, but I thought it would be nice to be able to quickly identify, or at least more quickly identify the quick link. For the brakes, I have this set of old 105s. I need to get some brake pads for it though. Here's something that might work. It's not actually a washer. It's like a very flat bolt, but it's like pretty much the right size. So let's see if that will work, if it's thick enough. Someday somebody, probably not me, We'll see that and think, what the heck? What kind of dummy put this bike together? Now that looks super close, like it's and it is touching, but once you yeah, once you get the cable on it, then it'll have enough room. Now kind of unfortunately I didn't find any cheap um, shifters brifters so I'm gonna stick the originals back on which aren't in great shape look it even has a hole right there but it's not sticky at least that does happen these are totally not sticky they're just worn out but they should work I think they'll still work fine there we go guys we have a bike shaped thing. All right, it does feel a bit small. Actually, this bike feels a bit small. I might, I think I'm gonna bring these uh, brifters up a little bit even more. Yeah, it's pretty, it's a bit small. There we go though. Whoa. So I definitely goofed this up. I had the, I had the whole thing together and it wasn't shifting that well. And at first I thought, well, obviously that's because this is like a 34 tooth cog and this is a short cage derailleur. So that's not going to work that well. And I could see on the biggest one, it really wasn't working too well. But then I started looking at it and I thought, wait a minute, this is a nine speed cassette. This is an eight speed shifter. Ay, 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 that was dumb. So, okay, let's go ahead and put the correct cassette on. This is an eight speed cassette. This one's way more appropriate for that short cage derailleur. It's much smaller. I don't know if this is 28 or 25 tooth. Hey guys, a little update here. So I got the back working pretty good. Uh, actually not just pretty good, really well. Uh, however, I wasn't able to use that other derailleur. I don't know why, but I just wasn't shifting good. So I decided to go back to the Sora and now it's shifting really nicely, perfectly in fact, in the back. The front, it's good, it'll shift, it'll go through all of the chain rings without too much drama, but I really, I hate to say it, but I hate it. I think I'm like anti two and three by. I used to like to buy, um, but it's just not that nice. It makes a lot of noise. You have to kind of overshoot the shift. I remember that from years ago when I used to run two by, and I'm thinking about going somehow back to one by. I know that's kind of like, I don't know, blasphemy on such a vintage bike, but I just, I guess I'm got to the point. I just hate multiple. I hate the two by 
and three by setups nowadays. I do have this. I got this also in Switzerland a long time ago. I don't remember where or on what bike. Uh, I did have it on a, a fixed gear bike at one point. It has 48 teeth, which is pretty big. Of course, I could change that because I'm thinking about just throwing this on. It'll kind of look cool because it, you know, it's silver. It kind of matches a little bit. I think I'm going to throw this on and just see how it goes. And just like that, we're one by. Actually, I think it looks pretty good. I was thinking about putting the derailleur on just to be act as like a chain guide so it doesn't fall off or whatever, but we'll see. I don't know if it really will be a problem or not. I'll ride it around for a while and we'll see if it needs any kind of additional guidance. Uh, it shifts through the, through the gears just fine, up and down the block, no problem. I did notice though the chain line is a bit extreme on the big cog in the back, um, but it still was totally quiet, so all is good there. I'm about to go on my first test ride and we'll see how it goes. Okay guys, I just got back from a ride and oh my gosh, this is exactly what I wanted. I love the one by feel. I love how it's riding. So quiet, so smooth, so nice. Um, I feel bad in a way. I feel like I'm letting the, the two by community down or whatever, but you know, here we go. Anyway, let's go ahead and put the bar tape on and then we'll be done. I also have a non-conventional way of doing bar tape. I really like doing it from inside out. And the reason being is you don't need to use any tape on the center. I've, I've done this a few times before and I really do prefer it. I'll show you quickly how that looks if you haven't seen it before and you're thinking, what in the world? So let's see if I, oh, this one by the way has sticky, which really I don't need, especially with this method, but we'll use it anyway, of course. So basically all you, all you need to do with this method is pick where you want it to be. I think I'm just gonna go right here at this juncture. And uh, I'm gonna put the seam at the bottom, I guess. Of course, give it a good stretch and go over, really, I mean, especially with this tape, you don't need to go over extra, but I'm coming all the way around to the top and then I'm just gonna start going. And I, I, know, I know what people will say or, and are thinking and, and that's, well, you know, if you go this way, you're gonna have the the, the grip going against your skin. And that is true, but I've done this before and I've never really had an issue. It's really totally fine. This isn't really a tutorial on bar taping, but in case you are watching and you don't know, uh, when you get to your hoods, well, it's always a confusing moment, but Basically, you do a trick like that, like that, and then back out of here. You can watch other videos if you want more detailed instructions on how to get that right. More like that, I think like that. Yeah. There it goes. Just needed to put some strength in it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Cool. That side's done. So now just do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> 